Monitors, sure, but actual computers from Dell, ironically, were never really my bag, baby. However, due to recent events, I've been forced to rethink this strategy. For one thing, you guys seem to love the Dell content, and for another, they've just done some really great stuff lately, like this easily upgradable Inspiron 7559 model with a GTX 960M and a reasonable price tag. So, by popular demand, here is my take on the XPS 15 9550. The Mastercase 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, so I don't pay much attention to Dell, so I actually knew very little about the new Super Mario, excuse me, <clears throat> new XPS 15 when I pulled it out of the box, making these initial impressions very raw. First, Dbrand, who provided the unit to us, did a great job of the skin. Apparently they do PCs now in addition to Macs, so good work robots. And second, while it feels really sturdy, I was surprised by the size and weight because compared to the Blade 14 2015 that I use as a daily driver, it just didn't feel that slim and sexy in spite of the carbon fiber construction, though there are reasons for that, so we'll get to that later, but let's do the physical tour. It really starts with the screen on this bad boy. On the one side of the slim, well-constructed panel, you'll find a Dell logo, surrounded in our case by a wood grain vinyl skin, and on the other side, the built-to-order Infinity Edge display. Dell boasts about the practically non-existent bezels, the viewing angles and the color reproduction of this IGZO panel, and I've got to give it to them. It looks awesome. It gets bright enough for easy use in broad daylight, and more importantly for me, it gets dim enough, without assistance from a third-party app, for use at night in the dark. I went with a 1080p non-touch model because I was considering the 9550 as a Blade 14 replacement, and I was willing to trade display sharpness for battery life, but it's also available with a touch-enabled 4K EXO display as well. My one complaint here was that there was more backlight bleed than I would like to see in the corners, but frankly I stopped noticing it after the first day, so there you go. What I did notice day to day though was the speed of this thing. I went with a pretty decked out model. So, packed inside the guts on the bottom is an Intel Core i7-6700HQ 45W quad core with hyper threading, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, apparently upgradable with 16 gig DIMMs to 32 gigs total, a GTX 960M 2 gig video card, and a 512 gig PCI Express based SSD. A Samsung 951 to be precise. Showing! Though, Dell doesn't specify, so your mileage may vary in the future. But while I think they've got a wide enough range of specs to meet almost anyone's needs, from mine all the way to someone who wants something more basic, I continue to be disappointed by their online configurator. Dell, the GPU belongs in the summary at the top of the page. These two models, one of which has onboard graphics and the other of which packs a GTX 960M, look like you're paying $250 for a hard drive upgrade, unless you scroll way down. Not only that, but while the 512 gig SSD models say solid state drive, the one terabyte PCIe SSD models, you know, the ones where the storage drive costs about a third of the entire machine are labeled hard drive. Does anyone even proofread these? Get your head in the game. And while we're at it, Dell, stop being misleading. If the 4K option is the only one with corning glass on the front, then that shouldn't be mentioned in the chassis blurb on a model that doesn't have a 4K display and doesn't offer it as an upgrade. Get your shit together, marketing and product merchandising teams. All right, this is a good product, so get this stuff right. Because for me, actually, yeah, it is a good product. The XPS 15 9550 was mostly a treat to use. The I.O. is a very solid mix with SD, USB 3, a battery indicator, and a lock on the right, and a combo audio jack USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 port with charging capability, HDMI, and another USB 3 port on the left. Thanks to the 6th gen processor and beefy battery, even my Core i7 model lasted me all day with 
ease, the two fans that take in fresh air through the vents in the bottom that exhaust onto the lower bezel of the screen, keep the GPU running at full speed, and take advantage of that extra size I said I would get to this, versus the Blade 14 to stay reasonably quiet even under an extended gaming load. And, like that recently reviewed Inspiron, they turn off entirely during light use. Great. The backlit keyboard, which thankfully, using function and escape, allows you to default to the F keys instead of the secondary functions, is quiet and responsive with good tactile feedback and a really solid feeling palm rest, and the touchpad was responsive with good palm rejection and solid performance during two-handed use, something that many laptops that have click pads rather than separated buttons struggle with. Which isn't to say that it's perfect. As a communication device, the XPS 15 falls flat for me. While I would describe the recording quality of the 720p webcam as acceptable, there are a couple of other issues that I have. Number one is that while I understand that Dell had to move the webcam below the screen in order to make room for the Infinity Edge display, what they didn't have to do is stick it off to the side, because it looks like I'm kind of staring off into the distance somewhere when I'm actually looking dead center on my screen. So it could be closer to this experience if it weren't offset to make room for the precious Dell logo. My other issue is that the included microphone is awful. Why wasn't that put along the bottom edge of the screen as well? Instead, it's on the leading edge of the bottom of the laptop, giving it an extraordinarily echoey sound. Even compared to other laptop microphones, this recording is from my Razer Blade 14. So for those reasons, I can't recommend this device to anyone who plans to use it extensively for video chatting over Skype or Hangouts. The Wi-Fi is Broadcom rather than Intel-based, and while it delivered actually awesome performance in my sustained file transfer tests, I have seen reports online of flaky behavior on 2.4 GHz networks while using a Bluetooth mouse. The keyboard gets a little warmer to the touch than I'd like during idle, and I feel like Dell might want to at least give me the option to fine-tune the fan curve a little bit so my hands don't get sweaty. And finally, most of the accessories, including the USB Type-C dock, aren't available yet, der, which is more like another organizational criticism and less of a jab at the product itself. So in the grand scheme of things, these are some pretty minor complaints that I'm taking into my conclusion here, and here it goes. In a vacuum, I probably wouldn't be that impressed by the XPS 15. I mean, sure, the slim bezel makes more of a difference to the experience of using the device in practice than you'd probably expect, but it doesn't do anything else that's really that special, right? Well, it's more complicated than that, because while it doesn't seem that hard to do what Dell did here, deliver a solid product at a fair price, it apparently is, because most laptops are frankly kind of junky, and when we consider the rest of the market as well, the XPS 15 stands out from the crowd by, despite my complaints, doing what it says it will, and doing it very, very well. Speaking of doing what they say they will and doing it well, dbrand Skins makes pretty freaking sick skins for all kinds of devices. They've got their online configurator that lets you go, hey look, this is my phone, or this is my game controller, or my game console, or my MacBook, or whoa, they've got PCs now, including the XPS 15. And you can actually use that configurator to mock up all kinds of different combinations of skins so you can personalize your device exactly the way you want to. And there's a practical component to it too. The vinyl skin that you apply will also help protect your device from incidental scuffs and scrapes, something that is great for something like a laptop that you're constantly sliding in and out of, say for example, a backpack or briefcase. So all you've got to do is head to the link in the video description and check out dbrand's high quality vinyl skins. I mean, what are you waiting for? Go do it. I ran out of gas there on my on my spot, but you guys get the point. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, hey, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop on Amazon, instructions for which are up there, by buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution. Links for all that stuff is in the video description. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right corner to check out 
This video that we're previewing here right now, I guarantee you it's amazing.